Welcome back to RG Geek. Today I want to go over my handheld collection. Now it's not as extensive as some of you I know on YouTube. I've seen some pretty crazy collections on here. But my little modest collection, I thought it'd be fun to show it off a little bit. So, let's start with uh, the first one I had, which is uh, Super Mario Brothers game. So, I actually have another video on my channel earlier playing this. But it's quite an amazing game, given the limitations of the time. And I had a ton of fun in this when I was a kid. So you can hear the full story about that in my other video about this in particular. So, ooh. So, I mean, and it's a clock as well. Yay, clock. All right, and it has a nice kickstand in the back. So you can stand it up as well. I mean, you can obviously push that in as well. I think that's really neat. I usually have this in my display case, so it's fun just to have it there and see it every time I pass by. So, and see here, this is the first getting into these Chinese handhelds that I've had, and I always forget the controls. So I made this cheat sheet on the back, so you can see select and start as insert credit. So let's do that. All right. And here I'm playing uh, Mame for All, Mario Brothers. Oops, this, this key. And of course, that's the controls are very difficult in this. Anyway, I can show you the menu. If I go back to, let's see, LR is exit to main, main for all menu. Get the start as well. Or you just have to wait, yep. The thing that's rough about this is the interface is just so annoying. So you go into 3D game to play main, or you go into interesting game to play other systems. So. You all know my obsession with pole position. I think I've got must have that on here. Yep. And that sound is horrible. But this was a pretty cool device just to have something. And I forget how to close out of this too. Uh, I think it's select start. Yep. But yeah, it's not user friendly at all. But it was cool. Uh, a friend actually gave me this, and I was like, wow, thank you so much. This is really cool. So, uh, this one I got for a Christmas present. Um, I really wasn't pleased with this, if I may be honest. It was just this build quality, it just feels terrible. This is like the worst D-pad I've ever felt in my life. Um, and for most of these games, you don't want to be playing on this screen either. So... But on the Game Boy Advance games, it works out pretty well. And that's pretty much the only plus that's has going for it. Oh, what's the, that looks familiar. <laughs> oh, and of course the sound. Those buttons feel awful. Oh. Oh. Let, let's see. Can get the regular... Plays okay. It feels a bit laggy though. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. You can hear how horrible those things sound. So, so you got the uh, link. Well, they do have the um, TV out up here, so you could plug this into a TV set. A mini USB. I mean, it's a bit old. 
Not that old though, that was the micro USB was almost everything when this came out. And you can put an SD card as well. Not terrible, but it just feels really bad. Anyway, let's go. Let's turn this off. Over here. Maybe use this so little that I don't remember the buttons anymore. Alright, that's good enough. Alright. This is cool. This is the bit boy. I, this is what got me into looking more into these things. This is a solar striker for the Game Boy. That would be fun to play, put a Game Boy on here. Oh, I should turn on. And the volume up is here. And the brightness is controlled by holding down select and pushing these buttons. <laughs> well, the problem I have with this is it's just too small. Um, after I play for like five or ten minutes, my hands are already hurting because I just don't have space behind them. It's the trouble having adult hands, I guess. But I'm giving this and the last console to a couple of friends so they can hopefully enjoy this more because I just they just sit and collect dust and in my place. So, of course, a lot of people say, uh, just emulate in your phone. So here I'm in, is my iPhone. I'm an iPhone developer, so I could actually just build RetroArch. And I've already connected this. It looks like it's turned off. So that's the fun of moving this over to slide the power. If you can see that. Yeah, there. And then the power lights come on. I can slide this back. This is an Xbox 360 um, holder I have here, which fits this uh, Nimbus very well. So, I can go with the sound here. I don't know why the sound's not working. Oh, I don't, I'm not playing the game yet. Okay. Oh, this is weird. This normally works fine, so of course this is the occasion where you show something off. This is so weird. The line disappears when you step on it. I've never had a problem playing anything on this console before. But anyway. Anyway, so if we go out here, if I have this here, so you do even do touch screen if you want. That's obviously horrible to have a touch screen. Touch screen with these games it just doesn't play well. But you know, it, let's see, hit this and go back out. And then you go, you can go to like load content and got all the systems you want there. I don't have many here because I don't use this really. The thing I find annoying about it is that you've got um, the weight on it. You've got your iPhone here, which is very heavy, so you're just feeling this constant weight on toward the back, and just not a very pleasant experience after say 10, 15 minutes. It's like, ugh. okay, I'm holding this up. Uh, I think I most enjoyed playing Atari 2600 Lynx on here because they're simple games, they don't last long and just have some fun and then put it away. But all that hassle of like connecting the Bluetooth controller and everything, there's generally a bit of lag as well. So I'm like, eh, not that great of an experience, honestly. So, let's see, the Wii U has Retro Arch on there as well as I've um, um, hacked it. So that's. Nice, but right now the problem is, I said it's a handheld collection, but it's the Wii U. It has to be close to the Wii, and my Wii is in the living room, I'm in the kitchen. So it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah, not connect to Wii U console. So, out to my last one, this is the one I love, as you know, from my channel, RG Geek. And I think this is just great. Let's just see. So you can have... You can see it being played in other volume control right here, right there on the device. You can see me playing this game in other videos. It's just amazing build quality. It's a bit heavy. There we go. Three, two, one, go. There we go. And I've got the analog stick here to control it as well. 
don't know, I used to love playing this game when I was a teenager. I was a teenager? Yeah. College years, let's say. This came out around 97. But this plays PlayStation games gorgeously on here. Alright, so which, uh, which console do you like best? How do you play your retro games? I'd be curious to hear from you in the comments.